This right here is called PTM. It's phase change material, 7950. Uh, there it is right here. This is an alternative to thermal paste. You can use this, basically it comes in like a solid, almost basically, almost like a thermal pad and you put it on your CPU or your GPU. And what happens is when it, get hot, when it gets hot, it changes phase. This is actually a compound that is used on Lenovo Legion laptops. Um, I think at least since 2022, if not earlier, I'm not exactly sure exactly when they started doing it. There was a Reddit user who did this on the Legion Go uh, uh, subreddit and I read it and then I talked to him a little bit. I'll put his information down below so he gets credit for the first one to do this. And he basically did a test where he tested his uh, Legion Go with stock and then he did phase change. And when he first did the phase change, you know, it didn't improve the temperatures of anything. It might have got worse, but you almost have to do like a burn in with this thing. So you have to, you know, run some benchmarks for a little while, give it some time. And then after that, it should be good to go. So If you're going to do this once again, which you shouldn't do, but if you do, against my will, better wishes, uh, be very careful, right? Be very gentle. It's not about, it's not like you're going to easily just break something, but you could easily break something if you're not gentle, right? Don't reef on things and pull wires, you know, like that wire there is going to get snagged and then you're going to end up breaking your device. Very gently. Oh, is there another screw there? No, I took that out. Oh, gee. okay, and there's the paste there. It's pretty dry. It looks like it's okay coverage. There's actually some kind of dead zones in there, actually. So, um, you know, that little bit that's missing there was on here. So it doesn't look like it's uh, terribly, you know, miscovered or anything like that. Um, they didn't put much, but, you know, I'll just clean this off. And then you could repaste it, which may increase your performance alone, just putting on, you know, a high quality paste, better spread. But we'll try the PTM here. So I just bought this off Amazon. There's other places you can buy them. I guess this helps you apply it, like sticky things you can stick onto the PTM. A brush for some reason. I'm not going to do that. A screwdriver for some reason. I guess just nice things. Alcohol wipes. I have already wiped mine down. And then little, I think they're called like, they call them finger condoms. Yeah. Yeah, you could cut out a little piece of paper and measure that. So one, I, one option would be, you know, take a little piece of paper, cut it to the parameter of the size of this here, and then, you know, place it over top of this and cut that. You can certainly do that. I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm just going to go like that. I'm go a tiny little bit over. Okay. Seems like so little. So I'm gonna use that little sticky tab so I don't have to touch it because I do not want to have non-universal coverage. It's not like paste where you can just kind of go crazy, right? Ooh, it's sticky. I might actually look through the camera. Technically, I can barely see what I'm doing because I'm looking over the camera. So my my solution, my, my suggestion would be to go slightly over, cut it just a little bit bigger, which I did, because otherwise if you get that corner up and you kind of mash it and you have a very small tool, stuff's very thin, I might have potentially destroyed some of the edges, not covered it, but if you see here, Right, like that area where it's kind of mangled over there is technically off the chip, right? That's not chip, that's like the PCB behind it, right? So, you know, I messed that little corner up there, but there's actually nothing under there technically. I just put it back. So I mangled this little piece right here by accident when I took it off, um, which was goes went right here, right there. And it actually had a slightly higher Z height, uh, which makes sense because that's going to go over there. Do, 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 do. It's a slightly smaller one, so I'm actually, you know, I'm actually going to put on a little bit of this G-Lid, uh, this thermal right one here, just because it's actually has the proper thickness. Um, so it looks like they use a combination of one millimeter and probably half a millimeter. Some of these actually look thinner in here, right? So I'm just going to put a fresh one on there, right? So this is one millimeter pad that I just put on. 
That's a one millimeter pad. I'm going to replace this one just for science. They seem to be using pretty good thermal pads. Um, you know, I don't know what brand they are or anything like that, but the quality seems pretty good overall. Um, I'm going to just replace them. But I don't have half millimeter ones, so I'm not going to be able to replace, you know, this one here that I messed up, but I'm actually salvaging that other one. So, you know, some of these you, I'm not going to be able to replace because they seem slightly thinner. Okay. This one you're going to want to just go straight down. Just like that. So you probably don't need to put tons of pressure. The actual mounting pressure here should be enough. Don't over tighten your screws. Just give them a little torque. Yeah, see how that slides in there? There's a little circle there. So that's got to go basically straight down, tuck it out. I can actually went way easier to get out than it was to get in, probably because I was nervous to take it out, to be honest. Well, there's a hidden screw or a clip that I'm going to snap. Um, this one didn't have any clips at all. There was nothing to snap. Just be careful with your wires. Technically, if you do this properly, you'll have a wire harness. I took mine out to do this, so which apparently that got messed up. Now I'll clean up. I'll put everything back together, and I will start my tests. Here's something you have to consider. Once you get your PTM on here, you have to do what's basically called a curing process. So you don't just slow throw it on here and then run some benchmarks and say, oh, my scores are down, because they will be, they'll actually be down. What you need to do is basically cure the thermal pad. What you need to do is basically cure the PTM or kind of like bake it. So you actually run like high temperature tests. So you can you know, throw in Cinebench, let it run for a long time at a very high temperature, then let the system cool down, then do it again, let it cool down. You do that over like a day or two. I've been, you know, it's two days later for me now. And you basically just keep doing that for a while and the PTM will actually get better over time. That's basically how a PTM works. So that's something you do have to consider. Don't slap this stuff on there and then say, oh, it's not working. You got to give it like almost a few days of just using the device regularly. And then it will and potentially, as long as it's real pads, should at least be the same, if not better. So the first results here are the original PTM or paste. I'm pretty sure they use PTM in the beginning, but We'll see the difference here versus my PTM. And this is Cinebench, so I did several runs and then basically compared them and I took, um, I didn't just eye it, I did benchmark outputs so we can actually do a comparison there. You can see here that the wattage is, I'd say basically the same, you know, the average wattage is slightly up uh, with the new PTM. However, temperatures are down across the board. So core temperatures, skin temperatures, et cetera, et cetera, around four to 4.5 down the whole way through uh, Cinebench, which is awesome. Sound is down by one dB. That could just be variance, so I don't really consider it any quieter. I don't really notice it any quieter, but it looks like the temperatures are down for sure. And the scores are up. So, you know, the scores on average went up by about 68 when I put them all together. 168, so that's decent improvement over there. Better temperatures and better scores, basically. I did a bunch of time spy runs here, and you can see basically the same thing. The wattage is actually down slightly, like not even... 0.1, so irrelevant, but uh, temperatures are down to not as much as Cinebench because it's not quite as demanding of a task. It doesn't just blast the CPU for several minutes, um, but you can see here that the temperatures are down overall. You know, we're looking at 0.5 up to 1.3 degrees lower uh, in time spy. And the thing is with time spy, you know, it gets warmer and cooler, warmer and cooler time. Uh, GPU scores are up like basically almost nothing. 20. CPU is up by 156, which is, you know, it's something. And, you know, it's slightly quieter. Again, the DB was 0.7 lower. Again, does it actually make a difference? Probably not, but the temperatures are lower, so that's one thing. And then I did Baldur's Gate, so I basically went to two different areas. The first one was an indoor area, late game, kept the camera very static and just basically sat there for quite some time. Interestingly, the temperatures are slightly up, but again, it could just be run variance here. We're looking at less than a degree on all of these measurements here. Um, so I don't think, and it, like the wattage is up slightly. So I don't think it's really significant uh, in this case. I mean, 0 0.05 on a game that has some variability, you know, like the camera could have been off by, you know, uh, six pixels, which caused slightly more demand and more temperatures, but whatever. So you can see there. Uh, however, the performance is actually up. So if you look here, I did two different runs. So the first one here on the top is indoors. So that's the indoor tests there. And you can see here that we're getting uh, no difference in average. So the average is basically the same, but the lows did come up actually quite a bit. So the 1% lows came up by nine, and that is significant, very significant. And the 0.1% 
percent lows came up by six. So that's actually very considerable right there. The average when I moved outside, so I went to Baldur's Gate, the city of Baldur's Gate, which is an extremely demanding area, and I kept the camera static, and people are basically just walking by, and so I just let it run for a really long time, get some averages there. And you can see that it did also come up a bit. The average came up by one, probably not significant. 1% lows did come up by five, that is quite a bit. And the 0.1% lows did come up as well, a fair bit too. You know, when we're looking at 0.1% lows, that actually may make a difference there. And it is, again, running a little bit quieter, 1.3, not gonna be game changing, but it is. it does appear to be running a little bit quieter as well. Here's one other thing I want to try. I just put some nice thick thermal pads. These are Thermorite, uh, Thermorite Extreme Odyssey. I didn't realize it was called that. Uh, it might actually make it worse in theory. I'm going to test it and see if it does. Um, you know, it's not like it's blocking anything. There's a lot of space between this vent here and that to pull in. And the air is technically going directly in there. But even this, it's not going to be blocked. There's quite a lot of room in there. But we'll just put it on here and see. Um, it's just an experimentation. There's a channel, I can't remember who it was, who had an X13, uh, Asus X13 laptop, and they added some thermal pads to some different areas of the piping, and it actually did improve temperatures, and then I did it, and it also improved temperatures. Totally different device, but the theory is at least potentially there, so let's try it out. And then I did that thermal pad mod where I added some pads to the actual device here to see if, you know, adding some thermal pads onto the heat pipe made any difference whatsoever. And I would say probably not. You can see here that in Cinebench, um, interestingly, the core wattage was down by, you know, like one-ish, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 uh, and the temperatures were actually slightly up, which is interesting. The score went up, and I did run it several times. They did go up on average, um, but I think a lot of that comes down to basically burst burst temperatures. So, you know, you have your system cool, and then you all of a sudden run Cinebench, and that those thermal pads have an initial heat soak where they suck up a little bit of heat off of that pipe, but then once they're saturated, they just stay hot and there's no additional cooling, which may actually, in fact, make it worse, technically. The DB did come down, but again, I don't really consider that much. Um, so I would consider that the pads, if anything, may be good for very short bursts. It may actually make thermals worse. You can see here that when I did times by same type of effect here, I did get better scores, again, slightly up on the GPU 20, slightly up on the CPU. However, uh, temperatures were up, again, so it may be that it's actually impeding airflow throughout the device when it's on there. And then you can see here in Baldur's Gate, there actually was a temperature decrease, interestingly. So, you know, maybe because it's a bit more dynamic and, you know, the system has some time to cool off, heat up, cool off, and you get that initial load there. So in benchmarks, it seems to either make no difference or actually sometimes make temperatures worse. But in gaming, it may slightly improve things, maybe. It's not a lot regardless, not even remotely as close to doing that new PTM. Then you can see here at the lows, um, they actually, you know, they went down. So the performance is actually worse in gaming. So um, I think that the, you know, adding those pads there probably is impeding airflow over the heat pipe naturally when it comes in through the second vent. And then what happens is you have worse temperatures. So after many, many hours of testing, I'd say my conclusions are that, at least in my unit, it may not be every person, you know, unit to unit variance, but in my unit, adding that, you know, new PTM seems to make a big difference. I think that the original paste that they added actually was PTM based on how dry it was, the fact that it's new. It could be a thermal paste, but I'm pretty sure it's a PTM. Um, I just, you know, took my time applying it. I don't think this is, you know, potentially any better. Maybe it is a better PTM, who knows? But it seems to be make seems to have made a pretty good big difference there. You know, I did use my Legion Go a lot before doing my initial tests. Like I did a lot of testing on it, so it's not like one was you know more cured than the other. I did basically the same on both of them. So I would say that you know it does seem to make a difference. I don't think that everyone should jump out and do it because we're not talking about monumental changes in performance, but it does bring down those temperatures slightly, um, and it does slightly increase performance as well. Um, the lows did come up in Baldur's Gate quite a bit, and that's run where where you know I'm finding it's gonna be most useful is bringing up those lows potentially. Typically these things ship with the Lenovo Legion warranty though, which is a really good warranty. So, you know, if you have bad temperatures, I would actually recommend just contacting Lenovo, let them deal with it. They can potentially, you know, fix some of your system issues. Um, you know, go through them before you're willing to take apart your system because it could screw up your warranty depending on your country. Some of them probably doesn't, some of them it probably does. The second test that I did was those thermal pads. It doesn't do anything, adding thermal pads to the heat pipe itself. But some air is also going to come in through this vent right here, and it's going to wash over that heat pipe, which you can see maybe on camera is now covered with a pad. And so what's happening is 
you know, the heat pads do suck up, the thermal pads do suck up some of the heat in general right away. But then what happens is they get saturated and then they're hot. They just aren't going to take any more off. And then what happens is the air is supposed to flow through there and, you know, even gently cool off the pipe externally just a little bit. And then that will you know, blow out. So you're going to get cooling from the internal of the pipe itself, but a little bit washing over it. When you cover it with those thermal pads, it does seem to potentially decrease the cooling capacity of that pipe because it's basically being blocked in. If those pads were connected to something like a gigantic piece of metal or something, if you put like a metal shield in there or something to off set and then the air would go and blow over it, or, you know, it was actually touching the case here, it would have somewhere for that heat to go from the pipe into the thermal pad into another surface. But as it is right now, having them on there probably is just actually making things worse at best neutral. So at best waste of money, but potentially also making things worse. So, you know, the Legion Go has pretty good cooling as it is just doing that repaste or, you know, repad uh, with that PTM does seem to make a big difference.